Welcome to Q's workshop. I'm starting off today with a series of videos covering the manufacturing of a ER32 lathe collar chuck. Uh, in one of my earlier videos, I covered off the actual designing uh, of the chuck. And uh, now we're moving over into, into the, the manufacturing of it. Um, so yeah, let's go. The first thing that I start off with is determining uh, the order of operations that I'm going to be working on. And that's key to really understand how you're going to be mounting the work and how you're going to be moving it around through the different operations. So I've marked on the drawing uh, the operations that I feel I need to do first. Uh, and the very first one would be uh, blue, the blue one, and that's to flatten the back um, that I'm going to do first. So that's just to prep the piece of uh, the, the piece of steel. Uh, once I'm done with flattening it out, um, I'll move over to the green, which is a slight recess, a 3.5 mil recess on the back, and that forms the registration that actually fits onto the back plate of the lathe. And that registration needs to be perfect. If it doesn't come out right, um, there will always be play on the, the chuck. So once it registers against the, the lathe uh, plate, there will always be some play on it. Um, so the diameter of what I've got, uh, what I've got there, um, it, it needs to be perfect uh, for that for that register. Now, once I've got uh, the register perfect, um, I move over to the mounting holes. Uh, so that's in orange there. So that. The workpiece gets taken off the lathe and move over to the mill, um, drill and tap uh, the three holes um, required to mount it onto the lathe back plate. Uh, that will make future operations a lot easier because then I can remove the, the lathe chuck and go directly mounting to the, the back plate. All right, so let's hop into it. I've got a nice chunk of cast iron um, doing some research. Uh, I guess a lot of people say it's best to use cast iron when making chucks and and collets and so on. So that, that's why I got it. Uh, it's 140 mil in diameter and uh, 50 mil wide. So there's there's quite a bit to take off. I mean, uh, I'm going for a diameter of 125. So what I'm doing now is is just checking which side of of the workpiece is is the flattest um, because that's obviously the, the piece that I want against the chuck to start off with. Uh, firstly, with it being flat against the chuck jaws, uh, it will hold better, um, but also it then allows me to clean up the one edge uh, the best. So it's, it's, it's twofold there. It's going to give me the best mounting, um, but also going to be able to clean up uh, one of the uh, clean up the front that's that skew. All right, moving over to the lathe now. Um, off camera, I uh, just mark the center uh, of the workpiece, and it, it just allows for easier adjustment in in the four jaw chuck. Uh, so uh, you can slightly see uh, a little dot there in the middle um, that I can use as a point of reference uh, for the tail tailstock and then um, with that being in the tailstock I can then just adjust the jaws uh, accordingly. I'm not too worried about getting it perfect. Uh, I need to take 15 mil off the diameter anyway. Uh, I'm just trying to get it as close as possible to minimize the amount of interrupted cutting that, uh, that the tool is going to have to do. And uh, just looking at those uh, chuck jaws, um, I'm, I'm really running that chuck to the max uh, size-wise. So I can already see the comments of um, it probably being overstretched, uh, which I'm, I'm conscious of. I did run it at very low speeds first, just to to make sure that it that it is um, holding together, um, and then just systematically uh, sped it up a little bit more and more. Yeah, 
It was taking a bit long to get that cleaned up, so I pushed up the depth of cut. Uh, you can hear the, the lathe actually sounds a little bit different, and you've got chips flying everywhere. I think this is a perfect illustration of uh, how speeds and feeds affects uh, surface finish. Uh, so there was no changes in the speed um, or the feed uh, that I was running at, uh, but there you can clearly see how it changes um, as as we move to the center. Um, and then that's because the, for the cutting tool itself, um, because of the diameter, the speed is actually changing as it moves to to the center and and that's how it affects the the surface finish and this is why i love uh, using cast iron it's so satisfying cleaning up those little chips Alright, so next up I'm just making some markings on the face just to be able to visualize uh, what comes next. So I'm going to start here with the, the recess now and I'm, I'm taking a bit of a different approach uh, and that's because I want to keep the center point of my workpiece uh, in case I need to use it uh, to reference anything again, especially when I need to drill um, the mounting holes uh, that get threaded, I, I need to be able to reference a center. So what I'm doing here is I'm plunging into the work um, because I don't want to, I don't want to cut out the center. So I'm actually going to leave a little piece in the in the center and then clean it up, uh, clean it up to the outside. Um, so then there you can see I've, I've still got a little a little point in in the, in the center. All right, so here I'm measuring uh, the diameter that I got there. Uh, on the drawing, I have 95 millimeters, um, but that's not completely true for my back plate. Uh, the back plate that I have is 94.94 uh, millimeters. So what I did here is just uh, off camera uh, crept up on 94.94. Uh, before moving over to the mill to drill and tap uh, the mounting holes. So I mounted the whole lathe chuck uh, in in the vise, uh, just so that if I need to move back to the lathe, I haven't lost any concentricity um, on, on the vise itself. Uh, I've got it fastened in with some, some wooden blocks, just that I don't damage it. So there's no DRO on my mill. Uh, yet it, it's in a box so watch out for that video coming soon uh, so all the measurements and alignments here uh, I need to do manually and, and at least align by eye and after all that aligning uh, I realized I never fastened uh, the mill headstock. So let's try that again.
year was where I uh, added making a tap follower to the list of things I want to do. Uh, it was painful to get this done uh, with it slipping, and then it was painful to watch it afterwards. Uh, I don't have any bottoming taps, uh, so I made the holes a little bit deeper uh, just to accommodate for the lead in uh, on, on the tap. I'm not going to bore you with the tapping of all the holes, uh, so I just tap them off camera and uh, then just removing the burrs. Alright, now that I've got the holes drilled and tapped, I don't need that little center register that I was using for the measurements, um, so that's going to get cleaned up now. I was using the wrong tool uh, to actually do that cleaning up uh, in the recess um, due to the angle um, going into the recess. I then had to do it in two separate cuts. Uh, so I first cleaned up towards the inside and, and now I'm cleaning up from uh, where I started towards um, the, the outer diameter of, uh, of the recess which wasn't necessarily the smartest move um, was what happened at the end of, of that cut is uh, I, I cut into the diameter uh, which then made the diameter oversized. The tool was also making some strange sounds and I realized I never actually locked it in. So I locked it in there and uh, then had to start from the beginning again because it was giving a, a very strange surface finish. So here you can actually see uh, that doing that cut in two separate stages has left a inconsistent surface finish in the, uh, in the center of that recess. Uh, I'm not really happy with that. Uh, so I continue here to actually mount it and uh, get a feel for, uh, for the fitment of it. So once I had the screws loosely holding uh, the collar chuck, uh, I could feel there's a little bit of play on it, which is not good. I'll have to take out the dial indicator, um, test uh, the, the tolerances on it as, as it gets loosened and fastened. Well, that's it for the first video in this series. 
please stick around for the rest and if you like that uh, please subscribe thanks for watching